Phase 4 of the MCU was not very well received, and Phase 5 isn't doing a whole lot better. A lot of people say that the Marvel Cinematic Universe should have ended after Avengers Endgame, but I think that's just absolutely untrue. The multiverse saga had and still has so much potential, and I think that Marvel is working on cracking down and making sure their quality projects from now on. But that doesn't change the fact that Phase 4 of the MCU could have been a whole lot better. Today, I'm rewriting the multiverse saga, starting with Phase 4. Before we start, I just wanted to say that I don't think Marvel should have went for the multiverse saga straight off of the Infinity Saga. They should have done something like the Cosmic Saga next, with the Fantastic Four acting as the face of the universe, and the big crossover events being Secret Invasion and the coming of Galactus. Then after that they should have done the Mutant Saga, with the X-Men of course acting as the face of the universe during this period, and the big crossover event being Avengers vs X-Men. And then for the fourth and final saga, they should have introduced the multiverse, and ended with Secret Wars and probably a reboot. But that's not what happened, so we're going to be sticking with the multiverse saga today. This is the multiverse saga. Done right. We're just going to be going over phase 4 today, and I'll continue on through phase 6 if y'all want to see that. Kicking off my version of phase 4 is the Eternals, which would be a 10 episode miniseries instead of a movie. One of the main complaints of the Eternals was that there were so many character introductions shoved into one two and a half hour long movie, so no one got their proper time to shine. In this miniseries format, each character would feel properly fleshed out, and we would get more time to explore everybody. We would also explore more of the Marvel timeline, showing us where the Eternals were throughout famous historic events. The plot would essentially be the same, except for the fact that Star Fox is a main character throughout the entire show and not just a cameo in the post credit scene. Star Fox would be used to show us some of Thanos' past and origins, and he would bring up the point that since Thanos was a de part deviant, the Eternals should have been there to help stop him. This makes Cersei question the judgement of the Eternals and the Celestials, and helps build up the end where she turns against Icarus with the rest of the Eternals and stops Tiamat from destroying Earth. In the mid credit scene, Several navy, navy ships go to investigate Tiamat's body in the middle of the ocean and discover that the metal he's made up of has extraordinary properties. The first movie of Phase 4 would be Shang-Chi in The Legend of the Ten Rings. This movie would be pretty much exactly the same, the only thing I would change is that we would replace the post credit scene of Zhai Ling taking over the Ten Rings organization with a post credit scene teasing Kan Lun and the arrival of Iron Fist. Next we have WandaVision, which will remain a series and stay almost completely the same for the first part of the show. In episode 8, we reveal that Agatha is working with Mephisto, and he becomes another main villain of the series. In the finale, Wanda becomes the Scarlet Witch and takes on Agatha Harkness and Mephisto, ultimately killing Agatha. The Ralph Boner thing would be completely changed, Pietro survives the Hex, and Quicksilver returns to the MCU for good played by Evan Peters. Vision and Wanda's kids are still erased with the Hex though, and by the end, Wanda runs away, on a journey to redeem herself for what she did. The scene with Monica talking to the scroll wouldn't be a post credit scene, it would just be one of the last scenes of the show. In the mid credit scene, Wanda is approached by Doctor Strange, who says that he can help her redeem herself and provide a safe place for her in Kamartage. In the post credit scene, we see Agatha, who is somehow alive and living with Billy and Tommy, who are aged up into teenagers. The second movie of Phase 4 is The Punisher. This one's probably the biggest surprise since clearly an MCU Punisher movie hasn't happened yet. This movie would take place in the five years where everyone was blipped, and you would really feel it. The entire thing just feels grim and dark, and the streets always seem so empty. This would also be the first R-rated MCU movie, it would follow Frank Castle going after crime bosses who rose to power due to the blip, and the absence of not only heroes, but also the previous crime bosses. Essentially, there would be a massive power vacuum, and everybody's trying to take the seat of power, which leads to crime becoming a lot less organized and a lot more chaotic. It would be a soft reboot from the Netflix series, and we would find out that while some things from the Netflix Marvel shows were canon, others were not. Iron Fist, for example, his character in those shows would be just completely erased and recast, 
which you'll see in Shang-Chi 2 when we eventually get there. Anyways, Daredevil would make his MCU debut and cameo towards the end of the show, and in the post credit scene, we see that Kingpin was blipped, and when he comes back, he kills several of the new crime bosses and takes his throne as the Kingpin of Crime again, making a new big game plan. Then we get the Falcon and the Winter Soldier. This would remain a series and follow Sam Wilson and Bucky Barnes going after the Flag Smashers, members of a terrorist organization who are inspired by Thanos to tear down all borders and create one world in unison. It's revealed that the Flag Smashers were powered up using the Super Soldier Serum, which was given to them by the mysterious Power Broker. It's also revealed that the Power Broker gave them access to weapons made of adamantium. A major subplot in the show would be the war for adamantium, which is created using Tiamat's corpse from the Eternals. All the stuff with John Walker remains the same, and the final battle takes place on Tiamat Island, where the Flag Smashers try to ambush several militaries, who are trying to gain access to adamantium, thinking that this adamantium war is stopping them from achieving their goal of uniting the world. The Flag Smashers are stopped, Sam becomes Captain America, and John Walker becomes the US agent. Sharon Carter is not revealed to be the Power Broker, instead she's just working for the Power Broker, and the Power Broker's identity is never revealed in this show. The third movie of Phase 4 would be Loki, which has been converted from a show to a film, since I just feel like it needed to, to be more of a major movie event that Marvel made sure people saw. A lot of it would remain the same, except Loki's character takes a bit more time to develop and agree to work with the TVA. Sylvie, who would be Lady Loki, kills He Who Remains and allows the timelines to branch out, creating the multiverse. In the post credit scene, we see hundreds of Kang variants appear on every timeline. Next up we have Hawkeye, which remains a show. I know it's a hot take, but Hawkeye is actually my favorite MCU show, so there wouldn't be a lot I would change. One big change would be that Hawkeye and Swordsman have a past together, and it's revealed that Swordsman was actually the one who trained Hawkeye. Their dynamic would be really interesting in this show. In the finale, Kingpin would be a lot more of a threat, and he wouldn't get taken down so easily or shot by Echo. This would be the first appearance of Yelena, since Black Widow never happens in Phase 4, which I think is completely fine. Hawkeye could definitely act as a good introduction for Yelena. In the end, we learn that Kingpin is going to run for mayor of New York City. Other than that, it remains the same. The second to last movie of Phase 4 would be Spider-Man No Way Home. The only changes I would make is that the Scarlet Witch makes a cameo, and Doctor Strange realizes that the multiverse exists for the very first time when the villains from other universes come through. Loki would have created the multiverse in his movie, so it's a very new thing for Steven when he sees it come into play. The Toby and Andrew cameos still happen, and Peter is erased from everyone's memory by the end. Doctor Strange still remembers fighting with Spider-Man and all the multiverse shenanigans though, so by the end he decides to investigate this new multiverse. The last show of Phase 4 is Moon Knight. This would be rated TVMA, and it would be a lot more bloody and violent. Jake Lockley would be a personality throughout the entire show, and we wouldn't have to wait till the finale for him to be revealed. Rama Tut, a Kang variant, would also have a major presence in the series somehow, with him acting as a main villain of this season. In the post credit scene, we're introduced to Bushman, who is revealed to be going after the power of Ra. The finale of Phase 4 would be Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. This movie would be a lot different than the one we got. Doctor Strange is investigating the multiverse after discovering that it exists somehow during the events of Spider-Man No Way Home. While investigating, Strange comes across America Chavez, who says she's being chased through the multiverse by a demon. This demon is revealed to be Nightmare. The reason Nightmare is able to travel through the multiverse would somehow be tied to dreamwalking, since the Nightmare rules over the dream dimension. Doctor Strange visits Wanda at Kamartaj and asks, asks her for her help protecting America. The three of them fight Nightmare throughout the multiverse, and we use the journey as a chance to visit a bunch of cool universes and realities. The trio visit a Savage Lands universe where they meet Kazar, and they meet the Squadron Supreme on their universe. Eventually they end up on Earth 838, where they meet the Illuminati. The Illuminati consists of Tom Cruise as a superior Iron Man, 
Professor X, Black Bolt, Yoan Griffith's Mr. Fantastic, Joaquin Phoenix as Doctor Strange, Captain Carter, and Maria Rambeau as Captain Marvel. The Illuminati tells Doctor Strange all about the events of Loki and how the multiverse came to be because he who remains was killed. They also explain how a multiversal war is brewing with millions of Kang variants. Then they explain incursions and say that with all the branches beginning to cross over, incursions are becoming a serious threat. While they're with the Illuminati, Professor X tells Wanda that their universe's Scarlet Witch was corrupted by her father Magneto into warping all of reality, but she eventually saw that her father was wrong and sacrificed herself to stop him. Wanda realizes that this Magneto could be her father in her universe too, and she spends the rest of the movie looking into him. Eventually, it's revealed that Nightmare is working for, them, for Mephisto, who wanted America so that he could kill her and take her power to travel the multiverse and take control over it. It's also revealed that he revived Agatha and aged up Billy and Tommy, who are all working with him. Doctor Strange, Scarlet Witch, and America Chavez fight Mephisto, Agatha Harkness, Wiccan, Speed, and Nightmare. Wanda is able to convince Billy and Tommy to come join their side after making them remember that she's their mother. Towards the end of the fight, King the Conqueror arrives out of nowhere and is so powerful that he is able to hold all the superpower beings off while he kidnaps America Chavez. Mephisto retreats after realizing that all the multiversal war stuff is true, thinking that it's not worth it and he's better off just ruling hell. America asks if Kang is going to kill her and take her powers, and he says that he doesn't need to. He just needs her help until his ship is fixed. Doctor Strange, Scarlet Witch, Wiccan, and Speed all return to their universe, and Doctor Strange warns the other heroes of Earth about Kang and the Multiversal War. Scarlet Witch also takes Wiccan and Speed with her to seek out Magneto. In the post credit scene, we see Deadpool traveling through time like he was in the credit scene of Deadpool 2. During his time travel shenanigans, he's eventually caught and arrested by the TVA. And that's what I think Marvel could have done to make Phase 4 just a little bit better. I'll continue on throughout Phase 6 if y'all want me to. I wanted to let you guys know that I just set up a Patreon, so if you want to support me a little bit more than you already do, check that out. Members of the Patreon will get to see videos early, as well as have access to exclusive videos that won't go up on this channel at all, including a face reveal. That's about all for today's video. Peace out.